Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Internal Network Security 101 for SMBs to medium-sized enterprises. All networks and IP devices have holes, which are known as CVEs, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. Everything with an IP address is insecure. It's a target. It can be spoofed, infected, remotely controlled, and it probably already has zero-day malware or an advanced persistent threat. It's probably already infected and you don't know it. Most risk is internal. While you've invested in firewalls, antivirus, intrusion prevention, and detection systems protecting networks from the outside in, today most threats happen from the inside out. We'll take a look at this in more detail, but there is an exponential growth of new malware, and your favorite antivirus program catches no more than 70 to 90 percent of malware. There's another issue which is the BYOD or mobile device management dilemma, bringing your own device in and out of the corporate environment. It's a growing consumerization trend and it's not going to stop. So you're probably wondering how do you manage your BYOD dilemma? I'll show you how. In addition, if you're a small to medium sized enterprise, you're a big target by hackers and cyber criminals today. And in fact, the smaller you are, the harder you fall. One breach could literally put you out of business. Top security experts believe this is an explosive trend, and we're going to go look at privacyrights.org and see what's going on today. So what's the answer? Well, it's really about managing internal risk, and to do so, you must know the risk formula and use it. So risk equals threats times vulnerabilities times assets, or R equals T times V times A. Let's go take a look at a web server as an asset and see what kind of vulnerabilities it might have and explore it as if we were a threat. First, let's take a look at the trends at privacyrights.org. So here we are at the privacyrights.org website. And I've clicked on data breaches, and it lists breaches across all various kinds of organizations. And as you can see, the trends are that small to medium-sized businesses in various areas such as finance, retail, e-tail, education, healthcare, government, etc., are a major target. And over 562 million records have been breached. You'll notice a lot of these breaches, which are very recent, are small breaches. All it takes is one record for $50 on the black market for a cyber criminal or hacker. So for them to obtain 294 records, that's good money. And the less records they steal, which means they focus on smaller organizations, the less they're going to be targeted by government agencies who might bring them to justice. So the smaller you are, the harder you fall, and you're now a target by these cyber criminals, as you can see at privacyrights.org. In addition, you can go over to another website that catalogs breaches, and it's called datalossdb.org. What's neat about datalossdb is that you can click on any month of a year and see how many incidents occurred that month. We're averaging about 200 incidents a month around May 2012, and just in the first 9 or 10 days of June, 22 incidents in the month. And I'm sure that that'll spike later in the month. So this is the kind of breaches that we're seeing across the board. Well, understanding not only that you're a target, but there's a new form of threat coming after you. Cyber criminals, cyber terrorists, hackers, and their malware, they will exploit you from the inside out. Behind your corporate firewall, you're probably already running some really good antivirus products, such as a Komodo or a McAfee or a Kaspersky, etc. And those have a good ability if we look at virusbulletin.com, virusbtn.com, and look at the VB100. It's their top 100 antivirus test, seven months of testing, and what have they uncovered? Well, they found that the ability to detect known malware is called reactive detection, and the ability to detect unknown malware is called proactive detection. So on the reactive side, we can see that most vendors, like McAfee and others, are in about the 70 to 80% mark for catching known malware. On the proactive detection side, the ability to detect unknown malware, that's zero-day malware, or advanced persistent threats, 
is down here, we can see that major vendors are in the 60 to 70 percent mark. They're not even up at the 80 percent. The higher you go on this chart, the more difficult the software is to run. In fact, Currenti, for example, uses four scanners at once, using up about 99 percent of your CPU. So your computer isn't that useful for productivity purposes, but you're more secure. So the balance is somewhere in the middle here with typical antivirus software, but its ability to catch malware is missing about 20% of the worst stuff that's out there. Now, in addition to that, now we're dealing with threats. Let's look at vulnerabilities. So if we had a bank, and this isn't a real bank, but we'll call it Hack This Bank NA. If we owned a bank and we had a website, and this could be like any bank in the world, and you can do this on your own. You can go visit Netcraft, and you can type in the URL of a bank, so you'd go to netcraft.com and type in the URL of the bank. Here's my fake bank, hack this bank NA. And you'd see what is that bank running today? What is the web server? What's the operating system? This is public information. This is freely available because it's over the web on port 80. Now hackers, cyber criminals, cyber terrorists, folks who write malware leverage this kind of fingerprint information about computers and operating systems and servers and services to then attack or exploit them. Most of the exploits are happening behind this bank's firewall, not in front of it where the web server is located. And the reason is that everybody's exploitable. Not only the web server running IIS, but desktops, laptops, servers, bring your own devices, droids, iPhones, Blackberries, they all have common vulnerabilities and exposures. So if we go over to nvd.nist.gov, the National Vulnerability Database, and we search for these CVEs, these common vulnerabilities and exposures, let's look for any CVEs in Microsoft IIS 6. Microsoft IIS 6 is what this bank is running, and when we hit search, we find that there are numerous ways to exploit IIS 6 because there's at least 20 holes, 20 vulnerabilities waiting to be exploited, some of them of a very serious nature, such as this buffer overflow. So don't do this at home, don't go hack your local bank, it would be a criminal activity, but what a hacker would do is they'd go to Google, they'd type in hack IIS download and they'd grab one of the many exploits. There's 1.5 million links to hacking IIS 6 and so these exploits are going after these common vulnerabilities and exposures. So if you think about it, it's really all about risk. What kind of devices or assets are on your network? What kind of vulnerabilities do they have? And what kind of threats are you dealing with behind your corporate firewall? And deal with those vulnerabilities. So find and control and track all assets that come and go on your network track document and remove the most serious vulnerabilities and make sure that you can stop the latest threats now stay tuned for our next video where you'll learn all about net clarity's NACWAL appliances these appliances deliver internal risk management they solve the BYOD dilemma they help you manage mobile devices and even block rogue wireless devices and Mac spoofing attacks across your Wi-Fi. They provide internal intrusion and vulnerability defense on your corporate network, your wireless network, your LANs, your VLANs, your subnets, along with network access control, regulatory compliance reporting, and can agentlessly perform these functions non-inline from a single appliance. Thank you.